All right, in today's video, we are doing oil testing. So for a long time now, I have subscribed to the belief that you should change your oil basically at what Dave's Auto Center recommends, which is like half of what the manufacturer says. And I saw a video recently that Bearded Ford Tech did with Lake Speed Jr. where he was testing the wear on oil in an engine that has the auto start stop technology. Basically your oil is subject to varying types of wear. And so some people end up dumping out perfectly good oil if they're changing every 5,000. So I think like for Bearded Ford Tech, his F-150, like Lake was saying, like you could go up to 8,000 mile and change intervals and your oil is still perfectly fine based on the chemical analysis he did in the oils. I am going to take an oil sample today and through the magic of editing, we'll skip ahead to me getting the results back and I will be seeing if the intervals that I am using can be extended. So my last interval, I think I went over the 5,000. I'm closer to like six or 6,500 miles. And so I'm gonna see where my oil's at. I'm using Amsoil 5W40 and the Archoil AR91 additive. So we're gonna see what we get back, but I gotta get the sample first. Okay, so the key for getting the sample is you wanna sample the middle of the stream, I think just so you get an accurate reading. So we're gonna try to do that. I'm sure this is gonna be interesting. I'll probably make a mess, so enjoy. Take this off. A little trick I do when I am emptying my oil is I actually will try to push the plug into the threads as I'm unscrewing it just to hold it there. And then when I'm sure all the threads are out, I just like whip my hand away. So yeah, I'm gonna push my fingers in until I know for a fact all the threads are out. All right, we're gonna wait, wait, wait. All right, that is a messy proposition, but definitely easier to do when the oil is cold, that's for sure. Okay, so we got the oil sample. I'm gonna send it to Blackstone and then we'll see in like a week or two what I get back. I'm hoping that because I tested, like this is like almost 7,000 miles, I think on this oil change, they'll come back and be like, your oil's fine. I think my oil life monitor was at about 42%. So I've never really trusted the oil life monitor that comes on these Fords, but ideally we would get results back that support the use of the in intelligent oil life monitor. So I don't know, I'm, I'm like trying to prove myself wrong here because for the longest time I was like, oh, you need to change your oil at a certain amount of miles. And then when I had a couple of folks on the channel say, hey, you should get your oil tested because you could extend your drain intervals and save yourself a bunch of money. I'm like, well, that makes sense. And it also kind of makes me look stupid because if I've been draining at 5,000 and I can get 8,000 out of my oil, that's a lot of waste I've been creating. So we're gonna see how wrong I was to do that. We're back. I got my oil test results from Blackstone Labs. So let's walk through those right now. So one thing that I wanna explain right at the outset for some that may not know, what is TBM? TBN stands for total base number, and that's the amount of detergents and dispersants left in your oil. They function to keep your engine clean, to remove varnishes and sludge buildup, and basically prolong the life of the oil. Because as we know, oil's two main functions are to lubricate the engine and keep it clean. So looking at the Blackstone Labs report, you'll see they have up at the top the unit, which is my truck and the engine it has, what type of oil and the use interval. So at this testing date, I was at about 6,000 miles. Under the client info, they will give you comments. And this is where the bulk of the gold nuggets are for those of us that aren't super technically savvy. They basically in the comments are telling you what to do with your oil. And this is what surprised me. I'll read it out and you can read along as well. Thanks for noting the arch oil. That's why potassium and boron are high in this report. And those elements are harmless in additive form. They're talking about the AR91 I use from Arch Oil. Potassium can be a sign of coolant contamination in testing. But since we know we're using AR91, we don't have any concerns about that. Okay, good to know. One of the things I was curious about with my motor 
it's not what I would consider a high mileage motor, but it has 135,000 miles. And, you know, I wanted to see, is there anything leaking inside the engine that I can't see from the outside? We didn't find contamination from fuel, moisture, or excess dirt in this sample either. The wear looks great. That statement right there is just what anyone would want to see. It, I was thrilled. It means that my hard work and maintenance is paying off. Love to see that. Metals are in nice shape next to universal averages, which show typical wear for a 6.7 power stroke after 7,000 miles of oil use. So with this, I was like, okay, I gave them my oil at 6,000 miles. So like my 6,000 mile oil is worn at what the average would be at 7,000, which is a little lower, but I'm not particularly concerned because when I thought about it, my oil is under heavy use, right? This oil that I tested was the oil I used during the cold snap we had in the Midwest where the temps were getting into the negatives. The truck was idling a lot. I was doing short trips, but I was also doing longer trips hauling a trailer, I usually haul campers that are between six and 10,000 pounds bumper pull. So not super heavy for the motor, but you know, making it work. And then I also had quite a bit of idling that I had been doing in the yard to warm the truck up, things like that. So severe use conditions for this oil. So I believe that's where that wear uh, that they're seeing after 7,000 miles, given I got it in 6,000, that, that makes sense. Now diving into the rest of the report. They list the elements in parts per million, which is all the different metals that they found. And then over on the right, far right column, they list the universal averages. So where my metals are compared to the universal average for my truck. And as you can see, the potassium and boron levels are astronomically high, which would point to the use of AR91. Now, I do believe that I'm going to try running without AR91 once and send a test back just to be sure that we don't have any coolant leakage. Rest of this is the properties of the oil. So you have the viscosity at certain temperatures, you have the flash point, the fuel percentage, which that, my eyes went right to the bottom, you know, just to, when I got this to see, you know, how much fuel was in the oil, how much antifreeze was in the oil, how much water was in the oil, which is awesome. They were all zero and solubles, and then obviously TBN number. So I cannot stress enough that this is a complete game changer for me. I do think if you do not want to do oil analysis and if you refuse to pay the $35 to have your oil tested, it's probably safe to stick to the 5,000 mile oil change intervals or every 200 hours. This report is individual specific to your vehicle and how you drive it. It is not a generalization. So I'm not going to start trumpeting that everyone should go to 8,000 mile intervals. I think that is really important to note because for some people, you know, there's gonna be some people out there that are using their truck harder than me and are gonna to need to change the oil sooner. There's others that, you know, maybe don't tow, maybe they don't idle, you know, whatever that might be, those individuals may not need to change their oil until 12,000 miles. Bearded Ford Tech's video inspired me to make this video and series. I think I'm gonna do at least two more oil tests, so I'll do videos each time I do them. But, you know, there's a lot of misinformation out on the internet where people are saying things, making recommendations without actually having concrete evidence and data. And so one of the things I wanted to move towards this year with my channel as an owner is I wanna focus on making recommendations and following maintenance procedures that are supported by concrete information, not just someone on a forum spraying beta about something that they did, right? I wanna know, is what I'm doing good for the truck? Yes or no, no gray area. There is a lot of good information out there. There's a lot of bad information out there. The goal here is to sift through that by actually running an analysis on fluids.
The cool thing is Blackstone Labs also will analyze transmission fluid. So you can see what state your transmission is in. By having that concrete information of, I know what is in this fluid that's been cycling millions of times through my engine and vehicle, you can then make informed decisions about what you need to do and prioritize in terms of maintenance or mods on your vehicle. That's enough jibber jabber for today. I hope this video was helpful to you. Again, I am not saying that you yourself should try 8,000 mile intervals. I think you should do a test from Blackstone Labs for $35, see what they recommend you do, because it could be more or it could be less than what they recommended for me. Everyone's different, but what it might do is give you longer intervals, so you'll be spending less. So in theory, the oil test would pay for itself, and it will also give you peace of mind knowing that what's under the hood of your vehicle is being cared for how it should. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you spending your time on the channel and watching this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. We will see you next time here on Power Stroke Maintenance. Thank you. Cheers.